Yeah, good morning. Uh, today we have an AMA uh, and have a lot of questions. So um, we will start with uh, what is the utility of the token uh, and then go on to the ecosystem that we have. And uh, today I have uh, the best person to answer all those questions uh, because he's our game design director. Uh, you already know him. So Felix, thanks for being here again. Hey, Luke. Uh, yeah, nice to be here again and answer some more of your questions. Yeah, uh, you were uh, actually requested for this AMA because there are so many questions which I don't have a clue of uh, since it's most likely somewhere stuck in your head uh, since you are designing the game. So um, <clears throat> let me actually start with a question um, for, the, for the token utility. And uh, for the people that don't, don't know it yet, <clears throat> so the, the TGE, uh, as we call the token launch or when the listing goes live, uh, is on the um, 19th of December, um, and uh, we have a countdown on our website. So if you go to me token launch on, on the website, so here on the token launch, um, there you actually see the, um, the countdown. You can also sign up for early access. Um, then, uh, yeah, the 19th, it's close. So in just a couple of, of it's not even two weeks, uh, uh, we have the TGE. So uh, how to get it? We have um, uh, different launch pads like uh, pools, uh, we pad, uh, trust pad. Uh, there will be one more which we will announce shortly. And uh, we will also announce the, um, uh, the exchange where we are going to be on. So uh, but for the me token, um, Felix, what is the utility behind the token that we have? So the me token will have kind of uh, the premium utilities uh, in the game, which are um, an example of getting voting power over uh, in-game decisions, like um, deciding on the faction you're playing with, like what is the next province to conquer, what should be the next event that is happening. Um, we will provide a VIP status for staking uh, the token, hmm. which means that you will have in-game benefits for your town, like um, faster uh, construction times, faster production times, um, more uh, generation of resources, um, having a second slot uh, to build and upgrade buildings. So all those small benefits uh, people are used to from um, many other games where you have a status for buying many items, we will give it for staking the token as long as you stake the token. Hmm. So in the end, it doesn't even cost you something. Um, then uh, we want to give access to purchase um, special NFT. So we will probably have uh, some land sales going for me. Um, we will sell um, cosmetics for me. Mm. So all the stuff that is making you special in the game, um, but which are not mandatory to play the game. Mm. Also, you uh, will get some um, use of game features um, that I mean, there's not uh, completely decided on which uh, that will be. Um, players will be able to get some airdrops uh, every once in a while with uh, the token, which can be um, like second currency airdrops um, of our game. I will come to this in a moment. Um, also, um, jip, 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 jip. What I might I have forgotten? Uh, well, probably players will trade with the me token in the game. So um, this will probably also be a common thing to use uh, the token for. <clears throat> and, and I think this is mainly it for the me token. Mm. Um, the second currency I've mentioned is um, our silver token. So the one which you are also earning on a regular state in the game. Um, this one will be more used for um, crafting your units, um, high upgrade uh, building levels, um, and 
sometimes also purchasing stuff in the game, um, which will be commonly used. By the way, <laughs> I I just uh, opened the game itself, so people can actually see. Uh, uh, we've shown that uh, in the last AMA, and you see like uh, the resources like Silver and Me. And for that, for example, like this has been running for a long time, so I can collect a lot of stuff. But um, you will be, for example, able to to unlock uh, uh, new areas or something like this with uh, with Silver, right? That's the yes. uh, the part of Silver or uh maybe the the instant upgrades of the buildings is that something that's from um from the silver or me token um or is it just this cost here so um this instant uh will likely um be either silver or um uh kind of speed up boosters or stuff like this which can be created in the game mm. uh so most things that are used in the game will not be based on the me token as the, uh, the value of the me token will vary um, potentially mm. a lot. And um, there is a high potential because it's limited in amount that um, the price for it will increase significantly. So we have to be careful where we are using this token. Um, and potentially not use it for mandatory stuff in the game. Therefore, mm. will be uh, the silver token. So the me token uh, will have all the stuff that is related to limited elements. So like if I said like um, land is in something that is limited, so we would potentially sell land for it because it's only needed for a certain amount of players, <laughs> but not like the every day player um one point where it's kind of for everyone is like the staking as i mentioned it um here we will uh, also use limitations so um if we use voting power it will be limited to like an example a thousand uh me you can stake so that we're not saying okay decisions will be made by the ones who own um the most token instead we want to supported that most players hold a certain amount of me and uh, therefore have access to uh, cool elements in the game and participate in the community. I, I like the workplace uh, when you say I uh, have uh, are holding the most part of me or something like this. <laughs> uh, yeah, with me, we actually mean the token and not you, uh, but yeah <laughs> <laughs> perfect no uh and that's a that's a part of rep free right uh uh that uh like if you if you you can compare it similar to shares like you own some shares of the company and then you you are the one deciding actually how the game is built um so yeah actually uh, we're not going to that point so it's not that uh uh with the me token you are able to decide what we are going to exactly build but um we will use it for really in the game stuff. So not about the project. So this is uh, the difference uh, to a gov real governance token. It's a utility token. So it's more like um, having governance only in the game. It's not about the project. It's about in the game, the voting power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and um, now we, we also go into the direction where a couple of people in the community have questions. Uh, one person is... Uh, CVW, it's always hard to pronounce. I told him that already he needs to change his name. But uh, yeah, so uh, the he are, is asking, for example, um, how we are integrating the, the plain earn gaming model and if it's uh, it's still viable because like people are either taking money from the ecosystem or you have to inject money in the ecosystem like uh, Axie Infinity. But actually we use uh, play and own, right? Not play and earn in that specific manner, right? Yes, um, we use play and own because um, real play and earn uh, can't exist because money always has to come from somewhere and yeah. and go to somewhere and believing that you can create a game where every player is uh, earning money um, all over the yeah. time is uh, not working. So that's why already when we started the project, we said, uh, no, uh, it can't be play to earn. Um, mm. 
we there had uh, play and earn um, first as phrase because there is the po a possibility to earn by selling stuff to other players you own but then it's mm -hmm. also um yeah then other players have to pay you so mm -hmm. um that's why we decided no also this is not really true because only a share of players can earn and another share is in the end paying for it mm -hmm. and we know from free to play there are players who are willing to invest money and spend money um and it's for free to play those players are the ones who make it uh, true but in the mm. end uh it's still not working so that is why this, we decided to move even on and say it's play and own so if you're investing um you're owning something in the game and we just rather see it that um trading with other players is a game feature so yeah you could make money with it but um it will be limited to what other players are willing to pay so it's yeah, not that we are saying you can based on the us. ecosystem then and how great the game will be and i think the game will be great so <laughs> uh <clears throat> yeah i i think that that's part of every economy like uh, once it's growing also the prices will increase and everything so yeah um and then um he he had another question if we did some kind of um um a team assessment with uh, team roles strengths uh, weaknesses analysis so just just for this part uh yes we did a SWOT uh, analysis uh, we did a delegation board to see who's capable of doing what and then we like basically shifted the uh, the um the work based on uh on the, the strengths and weaknesses that that we have in the team but another question for you uh uh how will the players actually benefit from collecting uh, lineage and legacy NFTs? That's a question that he also had. Okay, so lineage and mm -hmm. legacy NFTs. I try to make it short and simple for the moment. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> lineages um, will be NFTs you can use in your heroes and they can become better by being in a hero on, during the life cycle of um, that hero. And they will provide a benefit to this hero while it's there. Mm -hmm. um, and then they can turn into a legacy. And legacies uh, will be uh, used for special effects in the game. So um, we want to have legacies like that there. On a land, you can create a memorial hall for um, older heroes. And there you put your legacy in. And then uh, this memorial is creating a benefit for all players on the land because mm. um, it's like having the power of the ancients kind of um mm. with such a process you would uh for forever lock those uh legacies into the land so they can't be claimed again mm. um but that's kind of the basic thinking behind of that you use them to get a small benefit. They grow over time. Um, you could also say, oh, I use my legacy to turn it into a higher level lineage again and then repeat this process and um, have then mm -hmm. max strong legacy at the end. Um, also, we want to use it like going back to this memorial thing that we say, hey, if you have a certain amount of legacies um, of heroes from one family, we could uh, unlock the special unit of this family mm. for the players on this land. So um, that's how we want to use it as a direction. Um, going going into the, that direction as well. Um, so um, what is the prestige of a land? Uh, how, how does it work? And what benefits will the town uh, or even every land plot uh, have from having a higher prestige? Okay, so um, the rules are not 100% defined. Mainly, uh, the main influence of uh, prestige is activity in the land. So mainly fighting back invaders, taking care about the population, and this by all players on the land. So where you are giving, as a landowner, you give your land slots also to other players and how active they are participating uh, in taking care about the land. This is increasing the prestige. Mm -hmm. um, 
if they're inactive, um, the prestige is going down. Um, the prestige will provide a multiplier to um, the benefits you're getting from your land. So an mm. example, you have a wheat boost of 3%. Um, uh, this will be able to go up to um, have a wheat boost of 6% mm. uh, on higher prestige levels. Okay. Also, we want to give um, effects just based on a level. So like level one prestige uh, could give 1% boost in general. So, oh, okay. mm. so you have always have to... There balance everything that yeah, you... so prestige should have a benefit no matter what is the pre prestige level of the land but also boosts um mm. the, uh, the general benefits of the land so that there's a, an additional benefit of having a high tier land mm. yeah yeah it's so, sometimes there are so many things that you have to consider then while playing the game and i think that's for most strategy games that's why i love strategy games it's not just like hey there's the master plan go and do it uh, there needs to be a strategy behind it and that's also a question that uh, that he has is um how do you actually consider what are you doing next in the game like should you rather uh, increase the the production or upgrade unit buildings or like uh, spend more time into uh, units or hero or complete missions. So how do we best define which which way we would go inside the game? Um, I think uh, the answer is not easy. But, <laughs> but uh, The so answer is not easy. So um, there are multiple factors coming in. So one is um, it, in which phase is, are you as a player at the moment? So are you... So on the start, um, most of the resources probably will go into upgrade buildings yeah. directly. Um, then uh, we are not going for a core game. We want to go for mid-core. So we want to create some kind of behavior that you have multiple sessions during the day. Uh, you need rather do shorter sessions um, and then have potentially your longer break during the night so during the day you would potentially invest into units mm. to have something you can play with during the day and then at the end of the day um, when you claimed most resources you say okay and now uh, i start upgrading a building and go to sleep um, in on the next day and now i have my longer break um mm. while there's construction so this will depend on the daily cycles and also um, how many resources you're uh, having at the moment hmm. yeah while i play the game right now i have endless resources that's nice i could build the whole town that you just saw uh just by hitting the space button but that will not work later on so don't worry no. um <clears throat> yeah and then it will be deactivated <laughs> yeah maybe you can tell me the secret uh sheet code then later on no it will not exist in the game just kidding no. um uh, and then uh also one question like uh, how do you balance, for example, the, the armies that you will uh, be able... So during the day, you can then, as you say, for example, focus on building uh, building armies or heroes. And um, how do you... Um, like, what is the best way on approaching this? So should I rather have uh, uh, infantry or ranged units or cavalry? Um, what are the... What's the best composition of the, the army uh, that we should have? So in best case, um, you have a an amount of everything uh, mm -hmm. to be prepared for different situations. So we want to have mm -hmm. kind of a rock, paper, scissors system by default. Mm -hmm. So um, that, um, an example, the cavalry is very fast um, and therefore can reach archers fast, can't be hit by them uh, too much until they reach them and uh, then take archers fastly down. Archers, mm -hmm. therefore, um, have a long range and can shoot at the slow uh, infantry uh, pretty well, which are dealing with the highest damage in the end, but can't reach the archers too fast. But since cavalry is not able uh, to attack before they reach, when they reach the infantry, they have lower damage than infantry, so they are taken down by infantry, rather. And you will be able to check again what kind of units is my opponent currently using. Hmm. So you will check like on the map, hey, there's a horde of um, invaders. 
how I send a scout, check like, okay, what is their main unit? You potentially see, oh, it's just a group of archers. So I sent a troop of cavalry there to uh, take them out. Melt them down. Yeah. Uh, will there also be a difference in, uh, for example, yeah, we have the, the different factions. Um, is So will the different factions also have different uh, strength and weaknesses? For example, like the, the Crusaders, the Mongols, or like the secret faction that we will have maybe later on. Do they also have uh, different things that I have to consider? Um, we want to take this into account. So an example, if you compare um, Kanji and Crusaders, um, then if you look at the history that uh, the Kanjis, they were more wearing light armor, uh, were rather fast uh, and agile. So they were having an army that was mainly focused on raiding and changing uh, the position fast, while Crusaders were more armored, but therefore Smart. rather slow. Yeah, um, you saw that when I was wearing the, the wait, this costume here, <laughs> slow, like I played soccer and it didn't work at all. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we want to reflect this uh, in the game as good as possible, but uh, the battle balance isn't done for now. So mm. we have to find out what are the best options to bring this in, but we want to bring it in as much as possible. Um, here again, uh, there is one of those uh, nice points with trading. Players will be able to trade units also, so that even if you're having uh, the Kaji faction, you might have Crusader units in your lines because you've traded them from uh, a Crusader player. Okay, I don't think that the Kahi players will do that, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but let's see uh, how, how this one uh, will work out. Well, and... you can see it as mercenaries. Yeah. Um, in the past, you had yeah. mercenaries in your lines, and um, mm. they could have also been from your enemy. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, everyone who watches like Vikings or whatever you name it, which series, Game of Thrones or something like this, there's always some faction, basically, or some mercenary faction that comes in and shifts the game around or something like this. But, you know, I played a couple of games where, where you could, for example, just build archers, like, all day, and then cavalry, doesn't matter what came, you just had millions of archers, and then they were coming and they were falling like flies because I had just millions of archers flying onto their head so but uh, i mean we can balance it afterwards as well right if you see that one faction or one unit is too strong uh, we can adjust it right um hopefully we have adjusted before we release the game and, yeah uh, we have we, the alpha and beta also um Potentially, we want to mm -hmm. then rather introduce um, new units uh, that can encounter um, kind of the mistake before. Mm. Um, as we want to change as few as possible of what we have released. Yeah. yeah. So that players don't feel like uh, treated of investing in something and then it's uh, uh, nerfed yeah. again. Yeah. I mean, if they have an NFT and now it's less valuable and they, they invested a lot in I Okay, I get the point. So no changes. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, perfect. Um, and, and then there's another question. Um, um, how does the location of my land affect the, the travel time, for example, when I want to fight uh, other players or participate in events that are somewhere else? Is, uh, how does that work? So... Um, participating in events that are happening on a different province, um, there we will not take distance really into account. There we will say, mm -hmm. okay, um, everyone who wants to participate into the event has to um, send everything 12 hours before start or something like this. Time will only be um, important with distance if you're acting inside of your province. Mm. So if you're moving your units around inside of your province and want to encounter something there, there we will take distance into account, but not for uh, province switches for events. Okay, perfect. So we want to make sure that all players can participate on events uh, independent from 
their position, but local effects should have hmm. taken distance into account. Yeah, because because he was asking like if there's a river nearby, will they be faster because they can like go on the river? But I don't think that we don't have boats yet <laughs> in the game, so they will no. not be faster. Okay. Um, also, as I said, we want to be more mid-core and therefore simplify things um, mm. that make the understanding of the game as easy as possible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the last question is, um, uh, is there an existing strategy game that is comparable with the vision of Medieval Empires? I don't think so that there's a game that's comparable because uh, ours would be great. But uh, yeah, um, that's the last question that I have. So we have a lot of influence from other games, as I said, mainly um, mid-core games. Um, many of us are coming from the free-to-play area where we have most of our experience, so we have a lot of influence from there. Um, but we can't be like any of those games because blockchain makes everything different. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of inspiration there, but um, if you look at the free-to-play games, um, where you have a map, an example, they are all having uh, reopening worlds. So every uh, few weeks or months, they are opening another world hmm. where players are starting from new and the old worlds are kind of dying because they're not getting any new players in. Yeah. So we have had to change um, a lot of systems to support um, that players can forever come into the game Hmm. And this part we changed is still a bit of a secret uh, hmm. because it's, it's one of the big challenges how to move onto blockchain and hmm. one of our advantages because uh, we found a solution to support it that even if you're joining after two years, um, you will be valuable uh, for everyone and especially for yourself and um, you will be able within a given time to compete with the existing players while the existing players, if they are older, still have um, an their, advantage you know, or their prestige and their their special benefits. Yeah. So, yeah and I think that's that's uh, what uh, what is the new challenge in uh, in the blockchain gaming industry because like if you see the original games, like I, 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 if you're not there from the beginning, you're lost. Like you go in there, you have those huge big players. They just come and evade you, and like then I, I don't like to play this the, that kind of games because you enter and then there's some level ninety whatever coming and just like and you're gone. So uh, yeah, I'm glad you found a solution, uh, and uh, we will share the solution uh, most likely when we have the alpha version uh, with the players, right? So they yeah. can see it. And uh, there were a lot of uh, things that uh, we were foreseeing um, when we started thinking about the game end of last year already, before we were founding Moon Gaming. Hmm. And the two biggest ones were creating an economy that is sustainable. Hmm. And the other one is providing uh, a possibility for players to enter the game at any given point in time because we can't reset the world. Hmm. Yeah. And, and also do it for free. Like uh, they're part, like it's free to play uh, with uh, add-ons. Let's say it like this, uh, and that that was important. Like uh, you can also work yourself up in the game, basically by collecting resources and everything. And then maybe one day you will be one of the bigger players, and then you can afford other stuff. But you don't need to. That's the thing. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and yeah, uh, thanks, Felix, for for answering all our questions again. Uh, there's still a bunch of questions that are uh, left unanswered, uh, but um, yeah, we're trying to go through all of the questions that the community have, uh, especially our landlords as well. Uh, so if you own a land, uh, you have direct access to the team. We will answer every single detailed question that you have. Um, uh, in our Discord channel, we have a landlord uh, channel where people are actually like most of the questions are from 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 that channel because they they want to know everything how the game works in detail uh i'm part of that channel because i also want to know how it works uh so yeah um thanks felix and uh um is there anything else that uh, you wanna uh, the last one minute is always for you um yeah thanks for uh being here uh no at the moment not uh 
Yeah, um, that was a tricky question in the end. Too. <laughs> it was a tricky, uh, like uh, most of the questions uh, that were. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so we don't script true. those AMAs because first we don't have the time and we don't want to get too much of your time. So uh, Felix is always surprised by the questions that I have. Uh, yeah, but since this time, then, not even a spoiler about what the questions will be. Yeah, but but the good thing is, I mean, you are designing the game, so sh you should know all the answers, right? So. Uh, Perfect. All right, Felix. Uh, thanks so much again and uh, see you on the next AMA then. Thank you.